We've got a fun one today, guys. In this video, we're going to prove that cos of one degree is an irrational number. Now, this is a fun one because what we're going to do in a second is we're going to do proof by contradiction, but then inside it, we're going to do a proof by induction. So using contradiction and induction. So it's a really nice way to revise both of those two topics and a bit of trigonometry. There's going to be a few identities in here too. So there's a lot going on in here. Let's just go straight into it and I'll try and explain the logic behind each step as we go. So the first step, because we're doing contradiction, is to assume for the sake of contradiction that cos of one is a rational number, that, and that's cos of one degree is a rational number. That means that we can say that cos of one is equal to p over q, where p and q are integers, and obviously q is not the number zero. Okay, cool. Now we're going to do the induction, and let me just explain how this is going to work, because it's nice to be able to visualize where we're trying to go before we actually get into it because otherwise we might get lost in the weeds because also the induction is a little bit tricky so what i'm going to try and do is prove that basically if cos of one is indeed rational because that's part of our contradiction or our assumption that we're going to try and contradict if cos of one is rational what it does is it actually implies that cos of any natural number is rational and of course, we know for a fact that that's not true because, for example, cos of 30 degrees is um, an irrational number because cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. So if I can do my induction to prove that if cos of 1 degree is rational, cos of any natural number is rational, I will reach a contradiction. So that's what we're going to try and do. Okay, cool. Let's go straight in. So I've just written here, now I will prove that this implies cos of n is rational for all n in, and then this symbol is the positive integers, but that's also including zero. So all of the, basically all of the non-negative integers, I should say. So this is zero, one, two, three, etc. Now, because I can see into the future and you can't, right, because I know how to do this and you probably don't, I'm going to do something a little bit strange when I do the induction, okay? But you've got to just follow along with me because it will make sense and I'll explain it in retrospect. Once we get to the end, you'll see why it makes sense. I'll explain it, but just go with me for now, okay? I'm going to show that cos of not just zero, because technically that's the first uh, non-negative integer, I need cos of zero and cos of one to be rational, but that's not very difficult, right? Cos of zero is literally the number one, just as a fact, we know that. So obviously uh, one is a rational number, so that's pretty good. And also cos of one is rational as well, because we've already assumed that. We've already assumed that cos of one is P over Q. So like by definition of, of what the assumption is, that is true, okay? So we know that both these are true. So that means that the statement does hold cos of n is rational for the in the, the base case, which is when n is zero and when n is one. I know that's not the conventional thing, but again, you'll see in a second. Okay, guys, so I've just written that the statement holds for when n is zero and for when n is one. Next step is the assumption step. And again, I'm gonna do a slightly strange assumption. So I want to assume two things. I want to assume that cos of k is rational that hopefully should make sense that that was that's what the assumption should be but also i'm going to assume that cos of k plus one is rational as well now you might have a slight problem with me doing that because you might say wait a second aren't we trying to prove with induction that if the statement is true for k it's then true for k plus one that's literally what we're trying to prove that is true and that is what you normally do but what you can do instead is you can say, if it's true for k and k plus one, what I'm about to try and prove is that that implies that it is true for k plus two and k plus three. So I'm not just taking for granted, like I'm not doing the induction step in like a, uh, in like a deceptive way or like I'm, I'm cheating it. I'm just assuming two things and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you that if I, if I assume these two things, then it implies that the statement is true for the next two natural numbers or the next two non-negative integers. Okay, so this isn't it, this isn't a problem, even though it might seem like a problem because we're very used to 
if it's true for k, we need to show it's true for k plus one. What we're about to do is say, if it's true for k and if it's true for k plus one, then it's true for k plus two and it's true for k plus three. And you'll see that it turns out that this is really the best way to do it, even though it's kind of weird. Now, I am going to pull a trig identity out of thin air, okay? But you will see how it works and how it's really, really nice. I've actually just released a video on these identities. They're called the product to sum identities, okay? So if you wanna see a derivation of these trig identities that I'm about to use, there is a link in the description to check it out, but I'll briefly explain where they come from as well. So I've just written them down here. These are the product to sum uh, formulae or identities for uh, cos. So it says cos A cos B is equal to a half times cos of A plus B plus cos of A minus B. So just to be clear, if you don't want to watch the video, because I do have a video on the derivation of this, but what you do is you use the compound angle formulae for cos of A plus B and also the compound angle formally for cos of a minus b, and you uh, write them both next to each other, and you kind of treat it like a simultaneous equation, and you can get cos of a times cos of b on its own, and then you've, you end up getting this here. So it's not difficult to uh, derive this using the compound angle formally, but that's how you get it if you're curious. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to choose convenient values for a and b. So I'm going to treat a as some integer m or n and i'm going to say that b is the number one so i'm going to go this means that cos of and i will use n i'm going to use cos n times cos of one is identical to one half open bracket cos of n plus one plus cos of n minus one like that and then i could just rearrange this ever so slightly and i end up getting co two times cos n cos one is identical to cos of n plus one plus cos of n minus one and then a tiny 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 bit more rearranging i want cos of n plus one on its own so that means that cos of n plus one is identical to two cos n cos one minus cos of n minus one okay cool now this is the cool bit so we are trying to prove the if the statement if we go back to what we're actually trying to prove if the statement is true for k and k plus one then that means it's true for k plus two and it also means that it's true for k plus three so first of all let's try and prove it for k plus two so cos if i do a line here just to split it up cos of k plus two just thinking about what that means n is so in when when uh, we've got a k plus two here that is saying that n is the number k plus one okay so this is when n is k plus one cos of k plus two is identical to two cos of k plus one times cos of one minus cos of this is k plus one minus one so just k this is the cool bit right we know as per our assumption that this is a rational number cos of one is rational that was the assumption we also know that cos of k is rational because that was our assumption for the induction cos of k is rational we also know that cos of k plus one is rational as well because that was also built into our assumption so so far what we can see is that cos of k plus two is rational because it's two times a rational number times a rational number minus a rational number that is rational so that means that the whole thing is a rational number cool so so far what we've managed to show is that if cos of k and k plus one are rational cos of k plus two has to be rational but we're not quite done because we also need to show that cos of k plus three is rational as well okay so cos of k plus three guys that's just when n takes the value k plus two right so cos of k plus three is just identical to two cos k plus two times cos of one minus cos of k plus two minus one so k plus one but we can use the exact same line of reasoning right we already know that cos of k plus one is rational because it was in the original induction assumption this the cos of one is still there that's rational as well and now we know that cos of k plus two is rational as well we actually just managed to prove that just a second ago so it's two times a rational number times a rational number minus a rational number so that means that once again 
this is rational. So what it means is that if cos of k is rational and cos of k plus 1 is rational, that forces cos of k plus 2 to be rational and cos of k plus 3 to be rational. And if you were doing this formally, you then write a sentence saying basically like, if the statements are true for n equals k and k plus 1, then they're true for n equals k plus 2 and k plus 3. And then the conclusion would be that it's true for all rational numbers, blah, blah, blah. So we won't do, we won't write all of that down. It's not a formal proof, guys. I'm just saying it out loud verbally to you. But hopefully you are convinced that what we have just proven by induction is that cos of n is rational for all of the non-negative natural numbers. Okay, and of course, that's because of also we used the base case of k being zero and k plus one being one. So this is when k is zero. Uh, we already know the statement is true. So it's true for the base case. It's true for a general pair of consecutive integers or non-negative integers. We've now proven the statement is true. The cos of k is rational for all non-negative integers. And the punchline to all of this is that's wrong. That's wrong because cos of 30, cos of 30, oh, here we go. If I can, if my pen works, let's see if it works. Cos of 30, no, the pen is, the pen has gone AWOL. There it is, it's back. That implies, this implies that cos of 30 is a rational number, right? Because that's what we've just proven. We've just proven that it's rational. Cos of K or cos of N is rational for any non-negative integer. 30 is a non-negative integer, so cos of 30 is rational. So that means that root 3 over 2, because that's what cos of 30 degrees actually is, is a rational number. And obviously this is wrong, because obviously root 3 over 2 is irrational. So this is a contradiction. So we've managed to get a contradiction from doing an induction, which I think is really cool. And there's a bunch of trigonometry in this question, just all over, just great fun of a question. But of course, that means that cos of one must not have been a, uh, a rational number to begin with. The assumption must be wrong because we, we followed that line of reasoning and it came to something that was obviously gibberish. That means that the assumption is incorrect. So that means cos of one is an irrational number. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.